Hi kids, uh, today we're going to uh, be taking a look at uh, one of the most tragic uh, events in human history, that being the Holocaust. Um, a just a horrific time that um, uh, was the systematic mass murder of, attempted mass murder of the entire Jewish population of, of Europe. And uh, uh, in parts of Europe, the, the Nazis were quite successful in, uh, in doing it. Uh, not everywhere, but it uh, wasn't for, for lack of trying. And uh, we're going to take a look at that here today. Uh, this article that, uh, that we're going to read is, uh, I've had this one a long time. This is one of the very first things that I wrote uh, for my my students, and uh, you know this this the the main text of this uh, is at least ten years old, and I think actually older than that. I can't remember exactly when when it was done, but you're going to hear some some phrases in here that might make you think I uh, I wrote it uh, not too long ago, but um, but uh, no, this one this one's old, and uh, the lessons of the Holocaust need to be learned. So. Let's take a look at it, and if you could, please follow along while I read. The Holocaust, the War Against the Jews, 1933 to 1945. When the Nazi Party gained power in Germany in 1933, it started the road toward the most massive genocide in human history. What began as curtailed civil rights eventually developed into a policy of mass murder that came close to erasing the Jewish population of Europe. Anti-Semitism in Germany. The National Socialists, or Nazis, gained power in Germany by claiming that Jews were to blame for that country's defeat in World War I. The Nazis did not invent anti-Semitism, which is prejudice against Jews. There was a long history of anti-Semitism in Europe in the centuries leading up to World War II. Nazis were able to convince ordinary Germans that Jews controlled the German economy during World War I and also after the war was over. When Germany signed the armistice in November 1918, German troops were still in France and Belgium. Germany itself, though, was on the verge of revolution due to widespread starvation from the British blockade of Germany, which cut off food supplies. In fact, the German army itself was coming apart and likely would have disintegrated in a few more weeks, opening the door to a revolution much like the one that occurred in Russia in 1917. To maintain order, the German government ended the war. Due to the armistice, the German army never experienced total defeat on the battlefield in World War I, though it certainly would have if the war lasted any longer. When the angry veterans returned home, they began to put together what became known as the Dolstos legend, a myth that Germany did not lose the war. Instead, the army claimed it was stabbed in the back by weak politicians and traitors back home. To the brand new Nazi party, this meant the Jews of Germany. The Nazis gained power. By 1933, Germany was deep into the Great Depression, just like the United States. It seemed to many Germans like the democratic government that ruled Germany since 1918 was a total failure. Some people wanted to see a communist government like the one in Russia installed. Others were terrified at the idea of a Bolshevik revolution in Germany, so they began to support the communists' greatest enemies, the Nazis. The leader of the Nazi party, Adolf Hitler, promised to return Germany to greatness. He also intended to get rid of those whom he felt were dangerous or inferior, which included Jews, communists, and anyone else who did not agree with the Nazis' ideas. The first steps that Hitler took to get rid of German Jews were economic ones. The Nazis organized boycotts of Jewish-owned businesses. Not all Germans agreed with this, but the Nazis had a gang of thousands of thugs known as the SA, Sturmabteilung, who enforced the boycott. They would beat and perhaps kill anyone trying to enter a Jewish business or any Jews who attempted to protest their boycott. Since the Nazis were the lawfully elected government of Germany, the regular police would not intervene. In this way, many Jews were deprived of any chance to make a living. This caused many to leave Germany if they could. Other Jews, Jews tried to wait it out, hoping that things would eventually calm down. And here you see a photo that's very uh, indicative. This is a Nazi brown shirt. This guy, you know, he looks like he's maybe 18 years old, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and he's standing right in the doorway of a Jewish owned store and basically daring anybody to try and cross him. 
Okay. And you can see these two women who are there. They are not making eye contact with him. They don't want any part of this guy. So the people who own the store, well, these women might've been regular customers of that store, but they are not about to try and pass that guy to, to get in there. But you know, th that's what the SA was. It was, it was a gang. It was a, a legalized gang that, um, kind of just did what the Nazis wanted to do. And, uh, because the, uh, the regular police, they, you know, the Nazis were the lawfully elected government of Germany. So when the SA did this sort of stuff, they kind of looked the other way and didn't, uh, didn't bother to, uh, to involve themselves in, uh, in that sort of thing. But it gave these, uh, you know, young unemployed Germans who were probably just a little too young to fight in World War I, uh, gave them a uniform. It gave them some, a feeling of belonging, like they were, you know, part of this movement that was going to, uh, that was going to make Germany great. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they flock to it. And, uh, and you, you kind of see that, uh, just, just with, uh, with this one, one particular photo, you got, uh, one guy who is, who is using, uh, force and brutality, or at least the threat of force and brutality to, uh, to kind of, uh, enforce the, the Nazis will. And you've got, you know, regular people who just kind of want to be left alone. They, they'd rather not, uh, rather not deal with it. And that's, that's the climate of fear that, that developed in, in Germany. On September 15th, 1935, the Nuremberg Laws were passed. These laws deprived German Jews of virtually all of their civil rights. Their German citizenship was taken away. They could not marry Aryans, the term used by the Nazis to describe non-Jewish Germans. They were excluded from schools, libraries, theaters, and public transportation. Finally, Jewish passports were stamped with the letter J to identify the holder as a Jew. In 1938, things got even worse for Jews in Germany. In addition to the various troubles faced by German Jews, there were thousands of Polish Jews living in Germany. They left Poland in the 1920s because at the time, anti-Semitism was even worse there than it was in Germany. Five years after rising to power, the Nazis kicked out the Polish Jews. One young Jew named Herschel Grinspan, the son of Polish Jews, decided that he would get revenge on the Nazis. He shot and killed a German diplomat in Paris. The diplomat was buried as a hero, and the Nazi minister of propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, challenged Germans to take out their frustrations on the Jews of Germany, whom he said were responsible for the murder. What followed became known as Kristallnacht, the Night of Broken Glass. Led by the SA, mobs of Nazis all over Germany smashed the windows and destroyed synagogues and Jewish businesses. 100 Jews were killed and thousands more were injured in the riot, which, since it was directed at Jews, is known as a pogrom. In addition, the Nazi secret police, the Gestapo, arrested 20,000 Jews and sent them to concentration camps in Germany, many never to be seen again. And there you see a, a photo of a uh, Jewish synagogue uh, being uh, burned to the ground on Kristallnacht. The final solution. War began on September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. The Poles fell to Germany in six weeks, and Polish Jews began to feel the wrath of the Nazi policies. Areas called ghettos were created, only a few blocks square where Polish Jews were forced to live. To venture outside the ghetto was punishable by death. The Nazis' private army, the SS, the Schutzstaffel, began to cram in Jews from all over Europe as Germans conquered Belgium, the Netherlands, which is Holland, and France. Once there, the Jews were beaten, starved, and killed for little or no reason. And there you can see the wall being built in, uh, in the ghetto uh, of Warsaw that would separate Jewish people from the rest, of, uh, the rest of the population. In June 1941, Germany invaded the Soviet Union, which contained millions of Jews. It was obvious to the Nazi authorities that they could not continue to pack the Jews into the ghettos of Poland. At a meeting called the Wannsee Conference, the Nazi leadership decided on what they called the final solution to the Jewish question. At that meeting, Hitler and his advisors decided to murder every Jew in Europe. The SS built camps similar to the concentration camps already operating in Germany for years. These camps would not be designed to imprison Jews, though. Instead, they would exterminate them. The first extermination camps were built in Poland to take advantage of the short distance from the large numbers of Jews already there in the ghettos. Places such as Treblinka, Kelno, Belzec, Sobibor, and Auschwitz sprang up in areas that were away from big cities, yet close to the railroad tracks that would be necessary to transport people there. Jews were rounded up and transported to the extermination camps starting in 1942. Once there, an assembly line of death began. 
Victims were hauled off the trains where they traveled for days and separated. Usually men were sent to one side to work, while women, children, and the elderly were immediately sent to a different group. This second group was ordered to strip out of their clothes regardless of the weather. Then their hair was sheared. Finally, they were herded into large shower rooms where poison gas was sent through the vents. The bodies were then burned to erase any trace of what happened. This time became known as the Holocaust, which means to consume by fire. The killing continued for the rest of the war. Even when it became obvious that Germany would lose the war, the genocide continued. When the Soviet Red Army began to discover the camps as they swept across Poland in 1944-1945, most of those still living were already gone. The Nazis sent them on death marches back toward Germany so they could be murdered before the German army collapsed. The Holocaust continued until the very last shots were fired in Europe in World War II. The Aftermath Despite the horror, some did survive. Those who were able to somehow delay their deportation to the camps were the most likely to emerge from the Holocaust. Some were able to find hiding places, though they very rarely were able to stay in one place for a long time. Most often, it was a series of lucky breaks that allowed one to survive while so many others in the same situations went to their deaths. Some Holocaust survivors, such as Simon Wiesenthal, made it their mission to track down those who were involved with the Holocaust and escape justice. They exposed thousands of war criminals, the most famous of whom was Adolf Eichmann, the man responsible for organizing the transportation to the camps, which allowed the slaughter of millions. The numbers of those killed in the Holocaust boggle the mind. Around 10 million died during the period of the Holocaust. Six million were Jews, whose only crime was to have been born at the wrong time and in the wrong place. And there you see Simon Wiesenthal, who was a Holocaust survivor, uh, and he helped to track down hundreds of uh, escaped Nazi war criminals, but the most famous one was a guy here named Adolf Eichmann. You can see you got the picture of him in 1943, and then in 1963, 20 years later, when he had been captured and sent to Israel to uh, face trial for, for his crimes during the, uh, during the war. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this... Uh, shameful episode, you know, is one you, you see people who deny uh, even today that, that it happened, that, uh, that it was as bad as, as I just made it out to be. They say it wasn't that bad, uh, that the numbers are exaggerated. Well, that's all crap. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a, a historical fact. This event occurred. And uh, by learning about it and understanding a little bit about it, um, hopefully nothing like this will ever happen again and we'll never even go down that road uh, because it didn't start out with death camps and uh, people being burned. It started out with just taking away their rights and uh, trying to get them to leave. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's something that, that intolerance, prejudice cannot be, uh, cannot be allowed. And uh, we, we can, no matter what it, uh, what it ends up looking like, we can't have it. Um, and uh, those, are, those are the lessons that, that we need to learn.